Hi guys, uh, I am Dr. Zainab Bora and I am thrilled to have Dr. Akash with me today who secured the rank 21 in uh, INICT this time. Uh, congratulations first of all and uh, how are you feeling? How was the journey like? The stage is all yours Akash. Thank you so much ma'am. I am I not be happy in this I think. And uh, the journey has been up like two ups and downs. So I was very stressed up before the exam. But I feel like overall the journey has... Uh, it has made me into a better person. <laughs> That's amazing. I think uh, this this time, actually, this one year, uh, I've seen students grow the most, you know, because it's a very, very high stress environment and it, it you know, makes or breaks a person because of the whole competition that it's now, uh, you know, become into and it's huge. And and it's, I, I remember, you know, I'm sorry for, uh, you know, taking away your time, but I remember wow. this is not the way it used to be when we used to appear for the entrance, you know, like an exam. But now I see students making into life and death battle, which, you know, I feel very sorry uh, looking at. So, so tell me about your journey and, and, you know, how did you survive this very, very tough time of your life? Uh, so, ma'am, uh, like, uh, when I entered college, I was, you know, completely like this sort of, they said, you know, where am I? What is happening around me? Why do people know so much? Yeah. Uh, but luckily, I got a, a very good set of friends who always pushed me a lot. And I think that really made the difference. Yeah. And uh, I think, like, we were one of those, like, that friend circle was such that we, we were serious people in terms of studies, but we were also, like, chilling and relaxing. But I think the major change came in maybe third year and final year. Uh, I think that was the main thing that really got me into that zone that, you know, I have to clear this exam because I felt that I could at that time. Yeah. And uh, in internship, uh, my experience of internship was a bit different from a lot of people. Like my internship, uh, I really enjoyed working and mm -hmm. uh, it was like one of the best times of my life completely. I had no baggage from the internship itself, like that this happened at the duty, etc., cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I was very calm during the internship. It was just like the last month, which hmm. was uh, extremely stressful. Okay. When did your internship get over? Uh, Ma'am, this, uh, this year only, I think April. Ah, okay. So, yes, so you were preparing with your internship? Yes, ma'am. So take me through the specifics, you know. So you said you were a, a good student in MBBS. So foundation was good. And and then yes, how was the internship like? What What did you do? How did you take tests? Everything. Uh, so, ma'am, I started, uh, like, because my batch was the proper COVID batch. My second year was in COVID. So, mm. we had to switch to these uh, institutes. Like, we had to watch videos from some place. Mm. And uh, my sister was also, uh, like, in a similar place for journey because, like, she's uh, three years elder to me. And she was, like, she's that COVID batch who gave the exam. Mm. So, I was very well versed. Okay, that, you know, this has to be done. This has to be done. This does not have to be done. Uh, so I started building my basics at that time. And because I had a lot of time, I uh, read a lot of textbooks. Uh, like I read Robin completely. I read Apurva Shasti. I read Genong. So I had a very good base, but I was not uh, really focused on specifics that I have to remember this or that. I was just like going with the flow. Apart from that, I think I got into a lot of quizzing uh, mm -hmm. with my senior. And mm -hmm. uh, I used to like tell him that, you know, why do you know this and why do I not know this? You yeah. like just wait one year, you will you will get there. So yeah. I will always have that competitive edge and that really yeah. helped me. And then uh, I think I had a very good first, second year for sure. Mm. And because of that, of course, uh, fourth year was easier. My third year was very bad. Like I think that was the worst professional. Uh, I mm. used to hate off and UNT completely. And uh, by the end of final year, I was very comfortable with the conceptual part of all subjects, nearly all subjects. It was just the finesse which I was missing at that time and you know I was a very lazy student I did not like summarize things I did not mark okay that this is important this is not yeah. important I just used to read a lot in flow and I think genuinely like you were the game changer in that because everything just came together at once because of uh, BTR and that completely changed my approach because I was like okay this is how you're supposed to study <laughs> and um, so I think that was the the perfect thing that I needed for yeah. sure. I mean, that really helped me propel my confidence. Uh, I used to, I st I gave my first GT in third year uh, end. And okay. which was like a Q-Bank GT that I'll just see, you know, where I stand, what's going to happen. And I scored, it was a Q-Bank GT, I scored around 147 correct in that. I was happy, okay, that, okay, this is a good score. Then, two months later, I gave another GT. And this was like just before my profs or sent up. 
uh, I got a very good score in that. I got like rank thirty six in that. I was like, okay, now this can happen. I am somewhere. Was it think. third year? Yes, yes, end of third year. <laughs> okay. So no, but the thing was that I was always good at attempting questions. Like I had that yeah. ability to crack questions, but I was I was like you know making guesses that. Hmm. I have eliminated this option. Yeah, yeah. This is the correct answer. The art of solving the yeah. MCQs in general. Yes, I was decently good at that. I yeah. like from the start, and um, of course, like from thirty six, there is either there is no <laughs> way up. Like, yeah. Very like less way. You can either yeah. go down mostly yeah. or like stay at that level. And uh, for a long time, I was obviously stuck at that level. I was like, why is it not happening? What is happening? And when BTR came, I think that of course like changed it because. It was not like maybe my score did not improve a lot, but yeah. I was a lot more confident while answering that I have seen this somewhere. I have read this somewhere for sure. Hmm. So, uh, in internship, I uh, basically I had those PDFs in my phone. Hmm. I used to revise it in like when I have like fifteen twenty minutes off, I would revise a topic somehow. Yeah. Then uh, I attended the offline BTR uh, before the November I N L, like the last year. I was not not eligible for that, but I wanted to attend still because I feel that would like just uh, like get it everything together. And after that, I think three days later was a very major GT or something CBT, and I was like, I'll realize, you know, that how much do I remember and how much do I uh, not. And uh, that was also a very wild experience because I wanted to see, you know, how do I compare with other toppers, and I got a rank twenty one in that, <laughs> the same rank. <laughs> so that checks yeah. out. I think that's the best yeah. GTO ever. Yeah, because like I only had one day gap between the end of BTR and the CBT. Hmm. So I just said, "Okay, okay, one day I'll see how much I can revise, and yeah. then I'll just give the exam and let's see what happens." So yeah. that was the idea. So I think similar. Happened this time. I mean, you would revise everything, you know, in the final one week. So it basically offline is like a revision of the entire content in in you know three yes, weeks. Yes, ma'am. So a very similar scenario, uh, both of the times. I I feel basically you maxed out. Your plateau was itself very high, and and you know it's not a bad place to be stuck at. And and since like third year, that's that's just crazy. So I was uh like pre exam, I was expecting top ten from myself. I was very like in that zone that I can, yeah. I will. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Post exam, then the thing dropped. Uh, I saw the recalls. We were obviously terrible. Nobody got the questions like right. I mean, like the recalls had to. It was so varied. Uh, hmm. A lot of controversies. Even like I expected my score to be somewhere between one fifty five to one sixty five, which is a huge range. After that, I was expecting somewhere between fifty to hundred. I was still confident, and I had half made up my mind to take a drop. That I will just give November again because I can crack in November for sure. But luckily, yeah. I opened the result today. Mm-hmm. I was like really glad, uh, glad. Awesome! I think great. So, so what you know, I can sense from your journey and maybe sub try and summarize it is you always had a love for learning, and then that's how you always studied. And and uh, BTR kind of came in and gave you that approach towards NEET PG. And inherently, you were good at solving MCQ. So that that's always a big strength, you know, when it comes to students who who have that knack. And it's something which is an X factor, which cannot. I I don't know if it can be learned over time, but it's. A, something that that probably gives you a very big edge you know you definitely can acquire it by solving a lot of questions and get there eventually but some people probably just uh, born with it so you were uh, one of those so, uh, i was not born with it in my undergrad years <laughs> i was definitely no, not born with it but so uh, i learned the art it. uh, in yeah. the in... ma'am like uh, i did a lot of like i studied a lot from up to date as well I think hmm. that is a very different thing and a very yeah. weird thing because a lot of residents study from that. But yeah. I like especially for I and I, I felt that you know if there's a topic and you can just like you're in the ward or something, just co- scroll through the management part or the algorithm yeah. part. I think that that also helped me in my clinical approach. Maybe the direct repeats did not come, but yeah. that con I had that confidence that I've read it in a very good from a very good source. So I'm sure that this has to be the answer. Yeah, I think uh, you know what when we talk about entrances in general, there are two things to it. One is the specific content that you know it's it's out there in all of the apps, whatever you're doing. You know, it's out there. It's the specific questions which are gonna come, which are based on the previous few topics. And then the other half of the exam is your clinical acumen in general, and that is not learned, you know, in one year or one month, or it's not learned in an app or any sort of coaching or BTR for that matter. You know, it's something that you absorb along the way. 
away when you attend your clinics and you reach stuff like up to date or you just attend or be around an hospital yes, that's what i tell students you don't go inside you've been around and that is translated into instincts and that's what comes in you know those instincts are very very important in cracking the entrance and that's what is the case i can see you know it's very clear that that, that, you, that met yeah. form in question Yeah. Like was a proper internship question only. Like mm-hmm. if you've been to the OPD or if you've seen yes. someone on diabetic drugs. So I feel yeah. like that was one of those questions which was purely from uh, internship knowledge. Yeah, and, and they find a way. Aims particularly finds a way to you know uh, test that acumen very very nicely. That's what I've seen throughout. You know, somehow they find that who has been to the internship and who has been to the wards, they'll automatically do well. And this time I'm interviewing students since morning. Most of the students I've interviewed are. Uh, you know, interns who have just finished, like one month back, they finished and they've cracked in ICT. So I think that just goes on to show the importance of that clinical acumen. In addition to previous year topics, which I think everybody is doing and everybody knows, you can't go without them. So that's always there. So great, great. You know, I'm so happy. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you will get your dream branch. What do What do you want to take now? I'm so like uh, I was very like for the past two years. Uh, hmm. Before Ma'am Ravi Sir, also I was hell bent on taking neurosurgery aims. I was like yeah. very much on that track. But this time, I don't think they opened any seats. They said they have oh. zero seats. Really? In, oh, yes, Ma'am. Okay. And I think maybe because Sir has left. Maybe that's <laughs> why. No, no, that's definitely not the case. You just left like no. a month back, but that's not the case. I but you can try Nimhans if you really like the branch. Nimhans is one of the better places to do neurosurgery from, you know. But yeah, um, but like uh, being in Delhi, like six yeah. years commitment is uh, of course yeah. not. So uh, I'll have to explore my options. Yeah. So I really don't know. I mean, if I have had an answer, I would have told you. Great, great, but a good, good confusion to have, and and uh, I'm pretty sure you'll get uh, almost every branch that you want. Uh, so so congratulations, and hopefully I'll see you soon. All the best. Thank you so much, Mom. Thank you.